The Army Combat Fitness Test, or ACFT, is changing again. Now, this is not an old video, right? We thought we were good. We had the final version of the Army Combat Fitness Test, and the Army said, here it is. After all these changes, Congress wanted us to change stuff. We've got the new one. This is it. This will be in effect as it was as of October of 2022, and that'll be the new standard from here on out as of 2022. Well, now here we are approaching 2023, and they're apparently going to change it again. So we have this military.com article that says the Army fitness test might be revamped yet again for gender neutral and job specific standards. So maybe based on the wording might be revamped again, that maybe it's not 100 percent. Maybe it's not officially going to happen, but I guess there's talks about it. And you may remember, wasn't that the way it was before originally? Yeah, originally they were going to do gender neutral and not have to you know make a different standard for men or women and then uh, they did that and then uh, they didn't like that congress didn't like it didn't feel it was fair so then they changed things and made different standards for men and women whether that was the good move bad move i don't know right i i like the idea that uh that it doesn't matter if you're male or female you're in the military you're in the army you have a set standard and this is the standard that you must achieve to be considered a fit soldier to be in good enough shape for a combat environment because i do like the example that they were even kind of giving where bullets don't care enemy doesn't care if you're male or female you need to be in good enough shape to be able to do your job and do what you got to do is that necessarily fair I, I don't know right i'm not a a pro or a specialist or an expert on physiology between the male and female body as to know if you know these standards are too high for women or too low for men or too high for men or whatever right but i like the idea of it being one set standard doesn't make sense i don't know maybe that's why they're trying to change it again as in the article they're specifically kind of talking about how this must pass na pass national defense authorization act or ndaa is kind of the, the the bill that's kind of outlining this it's the, it would require the army secretary christine and i butcher probably the, this name was it a uh, warm mirth possibly uh to revamp the acft within 190 days of the bill passing so establishing the thing is they're trying to establish the same fitness standards for men and women that insurance soldiers can perform the duties of their respective jobs and that's what it was before and congress was not happy with that so then they made them change it so i don't know uh, it just seems kind of annoying that we thought we had the the final version and then uh now now here you are again uh back to the drawing board now here it's even talking about how the requirement would largely take the ACFT back to the army planners we're hoping for through widespread skepticism from Capitol Hill and warm earth uh, effectively forcing the service to have gender specific standards shortly after a military report.com on early test data showed that half the women could not pass the planned test. Now with it saying that this individual was responsible, it's kind of confusing, but it sounds like this individual that Christine Wormerth was responsible for them changing it, but she's also the person up here that it talks about is responsible for wanting them to revamp the ACFT. I'm confused. It's, it's like, make up your damn mind. If that's what it's saying, right? Maybe I'm reading it wrong. It's a possibility, but it's like, what the heck? Can, can people in Capitol Hill make up their mind? Do we want gender specific? Do we want gender neutral? What is it that, that you want? Why are we now all of a sudden, if you weren't happy with it being, you know, gender neutral before and you want a gender specific, but now you're not happy with it being gender specific and now you want to go back to gender neutral? This is the military for you. That's what it's like. They're, they're never happy. You know, you got to bounce back and forth constantly. It's crazy. Now, part of the problem with like the original version of the ACFT was, or like maybe version two, I don't know what it was, whatever version it was, the poor pass rate for women was partly attributed to the leg tuck, an exercise in which soldiers would touch their knees to their elbows on a pull-up bar. Now, uh, that that was the case, right? The study showed that a lot of female soldiers were having a hard time passing that. And I was talking to somebody recently and they were talking about how you know, a lot of that is because like men's center of gravity is more like in their upper body area, whereas female center of gravity is more towards like their hips, their waist. And so it made it harder for them, but made the leg, leg tuck really easy for men. That's why a lot of men could like crush the leg tuck. It was super easy for men. And a lot of men will tell you saying, man, the leg tuck was super easy, where maybe some females had a hard time doing the leg tuck, I guess, because of their center of gravity type of thing. And 
the key thing too is i know a lot of people would say like why on earth are they getting rid of the leg tuck when you know it's super easy for one which was usually comments from men because for them it was super easy and and then they're saying you know or we get rid of it because women can't do it so you want to get rid of it they officially said that they were getting rid of it because it wasn't a good test of core which i would probably agree with and that's probably why it was so easy for men to do and maybe hard for women to do but it wasn't a good test of your core strength so they then replaced it with a plank, which a lot of people say is a lot harder, which it's not supposed to be easy, right? You, some people make that make that that comment saying like, oh, why'd you get rid of the leg tuck? It was so easy. And now you replace it with the with the plank. That's so hard, right? Well, you're kind of contradicting some things here because they were saying that, you know, they got rid of it because it was hard for females. That's not fair, right? So it's just kind of like a back and forth with some of that stuff. But, you know, they still are kind of, you know, saying inside of, you know, the article that the uh, the two mile run is the most failed event. So now that they have gotten rid of the leg tuck, replaced with the plank, they are still saying that the two mile run is now been the replacement for the most hardest thing to pass or the most commonly failed, I guess, type of thing. And that's probably because you got, so many damn events. You're doing five events, then you go for a two mile run, you're probably exhausted, you're probably burnt out. My possible solution, I think, is maybe doing something similar to the Marines, maybe, where maybe you reduce it from a two mile run to maybe a mile and a half, or maybe even just a one mile run, right? You have all these other kind of events that test the physical strength of that soldier and everything, and the purpose of the run is to test their stamina, right? But because you have so many events now, maybe it doesn't make sense to do it as a two mile run, but maybe a one mile run, right? It's still probably with everything else still kind of has a good kind of test of that individual stamina and their endurance and everything like that. And then, you know, adjust the run times for a one mile run type of thing. So, you know, if they do go with this revamp thing, then they're going to go back to the original of it doesn't matter if you're male or female, same kind of standards, but is where they are talking about, uh, you know, making it to where it's different standards is based on your job. So here's talking about the service is also aiming for job specific scoring. The idea being infantryman needs to be held to a higher standard of physical fitness than a soldier who works in an admin job. But also part of the article is talking about the challenge with that is do we make it based on your MOS or do we make it based on your job position? Because that can definitely vary on the requirements if you have an 11 Bravo, an infantryman that maybe is doing army recruiting, right? And they're working in recruiting, which is kind of like an admin type of position. Do they still get held to that same standards as an infantryman in an infantry unit doing an infantry job? Especially if you're in a scenario where you're an 11 Bravo, you're held to the infantry standards of that ACFT, but you're working alongside, let's say, a 92 Yankee, a supply specialist who's also doing recruiting, but they have a lower standard. So just because of your MOS, even though you're not doing that MOS currently, you have to do a higher standard than the person that's doing the exact same job as you in recruiting because their MOS is a admin type of MOS. So do we make it MOS specific or job position specific? I think you probably do job specific type of thing because it's probably not fair to go and hold someone at a high standard like infantry type of thing when they're not doing an infantry job because maybe they got assigned to be recruiting. Maybe there are the units, uh, you know, uh, retention NCO type of thing, right? So their really job isn't to go and start doing all this weapons tactics and everything else like that. They're trying to, you know, try to get soldiers to re-enlist in the army. And maybe it's not fair for that individual to still have to do the same standard. So probably job specific would be a little bit better not MOS specific and even the same way too. If you had like an 88 mic, an infantry unit or some other individual that's doing a job that requires more physical activity than what their MOS normally calls for, then yeah, maybe you hold them to a higher standard because they have to perform that job in a combat zone. So they're kind of outlining some things, trying to figure it out, I guess. Uh, Maybe in 2023, we're going to have a whole nother version of the Army Combat Fitness Test. I'll have the full article down in the description box down below if you'd like to check it out. But I want to hear from you guys, right? Do you think this makes sense? Is it a good idea to go back to the original plan of being gender neutral? Doesn't matter for male or female, same standards. But do you think they should go with MOS specific or should they go with like job position type of specific and why? So we'll, we'll see. We'll see how this kind of turns out and what kind of comes about of this. What is this? What are we on? The, like the fourth, fifth change? I don't know what it is. I've lost track now. Uh, changes of the Army Combat Fitness Test. This thing has been developed for a long time. What was it in 2019 they first introduced it? And it's just been a rough kind of road all the way all the way through. So maybe in 2023, we'll finally get the final version, which we thought when we were getting the final version in 2022, but apparently not. So we'll see how things kind of play out. If you want to continue your viewing experience here on the Christopher Chaos channel, you can check out this video right here. Go watch it. Check it out. 
links in the bio or in the description box down below for social media, for affiliate links. Thanks for hanging out. I'm Christopher Chaos. See you next time. See ya.